Welcome to Pickaxe, a simple, no-code platform for building AI tools, sharing them with other people, and monetizing them by turning them into products and businesses. Let's quickly go over what it is and how it works. Here we are in my account dashboard. These are all my studios, which are basically collaborative workspaces where I can organize and work on tools. And these are a list of all my tools and where they are. We'll hop into one of these and go over what a studio is and everything about it. But quickly, let's just look at how to make a pickaxe because you'll be spending a lot of time doing that on this platform. There are two types of tools, forms and chatbots. Chatbots are open-ended conversations, very similar to ChatGPT. The user says something, the AI says something back. They're open-ended and at this point, the most familiar type of AI to most users. Forms are more structured experiences. You, the builder, create input fields that are either where people type in text or pick from a multiple choice option. Then they hit submit and an AI runs in the background and generates a response. We have dedicated videos about how to make bo both, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna run you through the chatbot builder. The two builders are very similar. In both of them, on the left-hand side, you build your tool, and on the right-hand side, you can test it. Let's just make this a Spanish tutor bot. Over here, in the prompt tab, we're gonna write our instructions in natural language for our bot. I'm gonna make this one super simple. Um, translate what the user says into Spanish. Here we can pick which model we want. OpenAI models, DeepSeek, Claude models, Llama. We're always updating this list so that you can stay on top of the best models. You can also give it capabilities. So here users can uh, upload files into the chatbot if you wish them to. You can even give it a little introduction. Um, tell me something and I'll translate it into Spanish. In the configure tab, we can change the image, uh, generate our own, upload one, change the chat icon over here, placeholder text, and even go into some more advanced settings about token limits and how, much, uh, how many tokens we actually want into this. We won't really get into that if it's kind of an advanced setting. In the knowledge tab, we can upload files into our chatbot. This can include uh, files like PDFs and Word docs, in addition to web pages, even YouTube videos. All of these will be added into our pickaxe and used via a RAG system. We have a whole video about that and how it works if you're interested in it. In the action tab, we can give our bot the ability to do things besides just generate text, such as make PDFs, um, send emails, generate images, generate audio, even trigger basic webhooks for make, Zapier, and automation systems like that. We have a whole menu of actions that you can connect over here, and even the ability to build your own if you're comfortable with a little bit of coding. We have a whole video dedicated to actions, which is a powerful part of Pickaxe, so I won't get too much into it. Let's quickly go into one of these studios and see what's inside of it. So here in our studio, the first thing you'll see are all your tools that are inside of it, a whole list right here. Now I quickly want to tell you what a studio actually is. It's a workspace where you can build tools and group them together. And very importantly, it also has a website component. Here's mine. It's called Shakespeare.tools. And it's a convenient place where I can bundle all of my tools in addition to some simple text so that other people can use them. I've even added some rules so that after five credits they need to sign up. Let's talk about this just a little bit. Here, with my three pickaxes, you'll see there's a tab called Website, and my tool is either listed in it or unlisted. What that means is if a tool is listed, it shows up in my studio's attached website. If it's unlisted, it doesn't show up there. I can still use it, I can still send it to people, it just doesn't show up there. It's very similar to YouTube, uh, if you're familiar with it. If you have an unlisted video on YouTube, people can still watch it, but it doesn't show up in search and you wouldn't even see it on someone's channel. So let's just make this unlisted really quick, which I can do by clicking here and see what happens. 
Now you'll see that it's missing from this list. That's because I've unlisted it. We'll get into the website at great depth a little bit later. Right now, I wanna quickly show you all these tabs. Let's click into a pickaxe and see what's actually on this page. Here we'll see some high level settings about it and uh, details. So we could actually switch it back to list it if we want, edit it if we want to. We can click here to see a quick preview and use it. And over here we have a link that we can quickly visit or share with other people. And again, this link will take them to the website if it's in the website. If it's unlisted, it'll just be a link directly to that tool. If we want to embed the tool directly into our own website, a third party website, or maybe a Notion, a WordPress site, we can. We just click this Create Embed button and we'll go to an embed customization screen where we can change all sorts of things about it, what it looks like, how it works, all sorts of things that I won't really get into right now. And once we like it, we would just save it and copy the code. Then we can embed it to our own website and people can use it. In the design tab, we can set some high level uh, stylistic choices that all of our pages and studios uh, and pickaxes will inherit. Here we can look at different ones. So maybe we wanna look at this uh, quote suggestion and change the color to make it more pink or red. Or we could leave it the same. We can look at all different types of pages here even our landing page and pricing page and content pages. I won't get into all of these here, but importantly, once you like them, be sure to hit apply changes so that they're saved. In the users tab, we can see some high level uh, summary of all the activity in our tab with these AI summaries. And if we click view more, we can view the actual exchange. These summaries exist both for form tools and chatbots. It's a powerful way to make sure that your tool is behaving the way you want it to. In the user memory tab, we can create memories that we, uh, like traits that we want the studio to track for specific users. For example, I'm asking this studio to track which uh, specific work of William Shakespeare someone is working with. So here we see this user uh, asking about Macbeth. And that means in future interactions, this tool will remember that and use it to provide a more customized and better experience for the user. It's not super logical or uh, reasonable to use for this one, the Shakespeare Studio, but if you're dealing with people, uh, things that have to do with location or jobs or salaries or fields or industries, this is a very powerful tool. If we click on the user, this is anonymized because this is an unlogged in user, but normally you would see emails here. We can actually see a little card about them. We can see what they're doing, how many credits they have left, and all sorts of cool things. In the Manage User tabs, we can do this and it's taken to the next level. We can click on users and change their credit counts, give them products for free, and do all sorts of things. In the Knowledge Base tab, we can upload files into our studio. Uh, files are shared and stored at a studio level so that all the different pickaxes can access them if you'd like but files are actually turned on or off for specific pickaxes in the builder. In the access tab, we can control some settings about who can use our studio and how much they can use it. We can make our studio public, which means anybody who finds the URL can see it and use it, or private, which means that only people with e at emails that have been already been approved will actually be able to see and use the website. Otherwise, they'll just hit a sort of login wall to request access or log in. If we're gonna collect payments, we can connect to Stripe here. We can control the different uh, messages that people get when they run out of credits. And here is a very important section where we can control how much people can use it. In the guest settings section, we control how much guests, which are users who have not bought a product yet, can use the tool. Here, I'm letting them use my tools for free five times. Then they'll have to buy a product. Let's make a product together. We'll make this one called Shakespeare Pro. It's gonna cost $20 and people will pay me once a month for it. Though I could choose these other options if I was interested. When they buy this product, they'll get 50 credits. That means they'll be able to use tools 50 more times. If we want, we can also lock specific tools behind products. So if we open this, 
we'll see that currently these three tools can be used by guests. That means guests can use their five credits on any of these three tools. But let's say I thought this one was special. I can lock it behind this tier, which means guests would not be able to use it. Only people who had paid $20 for my Shakespeare Pro uh, product would be able to use this tool. In the settings tab, you can control a lot of miscellaneous other settings. You might think of it as the everything drawer. We have our studio's name, the profile picture, the language we want it to appear in, which will change all of the end user facing interface uh, language, whether we want it to collect history or not, whether we want to host it at a custom domain. We'll see that mine is hosted at a domain I bought, shakespeare.tools. We can add API keys uh, if we want so that our tool will use an API key as opposed to our pickaxe credits. And we can even inject uh, special code to do things like add cookie pop-ups, um, track stuff for Google Analytics, or track things for uh, Google Ads and Facebook Ads and stuff. Any of that you can put here. But now let's look at our actual website. At any moment you can edit it here. When you click this, you'll go into a visual website editor. What that means is you'll see uh, the page right here. And if we want to edit it, we'll simply click here and then we can start to add new text here. In addition to change many of the stylistic elements here. If you like your changes, just hit save. I'll discard these because I don't really care about them. At any moment, we can add tools, uh, more tools to our website here, in addition to folders where we can put things into and content pages. Content pages are exactly what they sound like, a place to put content. So if we edit one here, we could call this my content page. We can edit all sorts of stuff and add new sections, either in Markdown, a lightweight uh, way to like make things bold and big and make things look good, or HTML, which is a little bit heavier and will let us do more custom stuff. If we like this, uh, content page, at any moment we can go and set it as our home page. This means that when people go to our root URL, in this case shakespeare.tools, they'll end up at this page. Currently my landing page is my home page, but I could make it this if I want. That was a high level overview of what Pickaxe is and how to use it. If you have questions, I encourage you to go to the blog where we write posts, or the community forum where you can connect with other users. At the bottom of the page, you'll also see things like our YouTube tutorials and even a page to hire experts, which are other Pickaxe customers who now uh, do work for hire, building tools, studios, and even other work that is not necessarily Pickaxe, but related to it. You can also talk to our Pickaxe doorman, which is an AI bot we, the Pickaxe team, have made to answer questions. It can answer most simple questions, and if it doesn't know, it'll just tell you to email us. And ultimately, that's the last thing you should do if you have questions. Email us at info at pickaxeproject.com. We're always happy to meet customers, talk to them, and help solve their problems. Thanks.